Hello, and welcome to this presentation of Incredible Design Innovations with Autodesk Inventor Shape Generator. My name is Brian Verbort, and I'm a Solutions Engineer with M2 Technologies. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. We hope you find it valuable. Let's briefly go over our agenda. We will be taking a detailed look at a design challenge you might face every day in your design and manufacturing environments. And that is finding a creative solution to meet strict functional design requirements. We'll see an example of just one of the benefits users of Autodesk products leverage to help them solve these types of problems. In this case, redesigning a clamping fixture to improve welding fixture cycle times and at the same time use a less expensive cylinder. Let's take a closer look at the use of Autodesk Inventor's Shape Generator and how it can be applied to help meet these requirements by reducing the mass of the clamping plate. So let's get started. I've already got the assembly open where the clamping plate is referenced. Now let's go on to work on the plate itself. I'll start by switching to use a part priority filter. And I'll use that filter to easily open the plate part model file. In the part model, we want to start out by making some edits using the direct editing tools. This will allow us to easily make some changes to this model for optimization to give us a larger boundary than we need so that the optimization has some freedom to add material in areas that we don't have space restrictions and we can get the best possible results. This file is vaulted, so we're going to be prompted here to check the document out for editing. I'll make an edit to one additional face as well by simply selecting and dragging. I'll go with a 45 millimeter distance for the offset here. Now that we've prepared the plate for optimization by resizing it a bit, let's go to work using the shape generator. You'll see when I activate the shape generator tool, it's really an analysis environment. But actually it's a reversed analysis environment. We flipped analysis on its head. We're going to be asking the tool where material is actually required rather than identify areas that material should be removed. We'll start by placing constraints describing the function of the plate. We'll place a pin constraint here. We'll also apply a bearing constraint to the plate where the cylinder connects to the component. And then we'll define the direction of the force that's being applied as well as adding the magnitude of the force. In addition, we'll add a frictionless constraint which will describe the nature of the jack screws contact against the part being clamped for welding. Beyond that, we want to have the ability to preserve regions We'd like to keep material in specific areas of our design just as it is. So I'll be able to define keep out areas essentially here by picking a cylindrical surface in this case which describes a cylindrical area and selecting a planar surface describes a box or a rectangular area. And these areas can easily be modified in size. Now that this has been accomplished, let's talk about generating the shape itself. So let's go ahead and run the study. In this case, the material in our defined keepout areas is going to be preserved, and the analysis will include this material just as it is during the optimization process. The larger boundary will be defined, giving the analysis freedom to create the material it needs, all while utilizing additional space in those areas where we don't have clearance or fit problems. So here's the resulting shape, and we can see it overlaid on our current plate that we used as our design envelope. We had an original mass of roughly two and a half kilograms and we now have a mass of about one which looks like a mass reduction of about 58 percent. Let's take another look at this and make some adjustments to the shape generator settings. I'm going to be a little more aggressive here. I'd like to see this mass reduced even further. In addition, I may want to support this effort by making a change to the material that's being used for the component. We'll see this part's currently assigned a mild steel material. I can define something else here. In this case, I'll go ahead and assign steel alloy as the material. And with those two changes, 
the more aggressive material removal for weight reduction, in addition to the change in material, let's see what we end up with now. We can see the results need updating, so let's generate the shape again. While that's processing, I'm sure you can see how this tool enables a simple method of iterative design, and it can really make a difference in your design and engineering process. So here are the results of the more aggressive attack that we used in meeting the new requirements. The results have been updated, and we can see we're just over a half a kilogram in mass for a much more significant weight reduction, which more than meets our requirements. Now let's promote the shape into the current part file. We could also export it out as an STL file for use in the additive manufacturing process. I'll select OK here to include that shape in the part model. You'll see it listed here in the browser as part of the part model. The next thing we want to do is change the way it looks. I'll change the visual style to a wireframe view, and then create a new sketch on the top face of the plate. This is going to allow us to use some of the inventor sketching and modeling tools that you may already be familiar with. What I'm doing here is simply creating a few closed boundaries. I'll use these boundaries to trim off some of the material that isn't needed. I can use geometric constraints and dimensions, and I can create relationships using these tools between the features. I can also capture any design intent that might be required. For example, we can add parallelism to make lines parallel with one another. And this will create and maintain a common wall thickness, and will also facilitate manufacturability and, and inspection. Another example is the addition of dimensional constraints. We can place these dimensions at any time, just like geometric constraints. General dimensions allow us to control the size or distance between features. Another thing we might want to do is add some fillets. This way the part can be more easily produced using conventional machining methods. I can add these features either to the part or here in the sketch, which may help us describe the geometry a little bit better with less effort. Either method is acceptable in this particular case. Just a few more nudges, some dimensions and constraints here and there to get things a little bit more in shape and constrain the shape completely. With a right click we'll finish the sketch and then we'll just use the extrude function. We'll be selecting the boundaries that we want to use to remove the material that isn't required. This will be a cut operation all the way through the plate. And now we've got that accomplished, we'll go ahead and turn the visibility off on the promoted mesh shape. And then I'll return visibility to one of the shaded modes. At this point we can add some additional fillets. These will remove some of the sharp edges that are left from the modeling process so far. We'll use a 5 millimeter radius in this case. In addition, we have another filleting tool that we can use, what's known as a rule fillet. A rule fillet works here to easily break the remaining edges with a single selection. And then, let's create a quick drawing for this part. We'll use an ANSI standard template for the drawing, and we'll place several views, standard orthogonal views, and we'll also include an isometric view. And that's it. Fast and painless innovative designs which meet your specific design requirements. Thank you for your attention. We hope that you found this demonstration helpful and informative.